I think the, the biggest problem today stems from people uh, making the mistake that the unit in question in t test driven development is the object under test as opposed to the test itself. Um, the definition of, for TDD of a unit test is a test that runs in isolation from other tests. And the problem with that is it's created a um, misunderstanding that people go away and say, well, I need to create this class, I need to isolate from other classes because otherwise it won't be a unit test and I'm testing specific operations on this class. The problem with that is that then that drives you away from a, an approach based on behaviors. And really you don't want to be testing just one thing, you want to be testing a behavior and the test of that behavior should be isolated from other tests. Part of the problem is that um, because people have been testing their implementation details, and by that I mean they haven't written their tests just against the API of their module um, or of their particular um, service, that they've drilled in deep into the domain. So they've written a lot of tests. And many of those tests, there's no additional coverage provided because the outer tests against the API are covering those scenarios. So that because they write a lot of tests, they slow down development. If they actually instead said, uh, I just want to test my API, the exterior of the module, the public classes, they could write a lot less tests and be much more productive. And it has the side benefit that it's now easy to actually refactor. Because refactoring is supposed to be uh, changing the implementation details without breaking any tests. Too many people are on a model where when they refactor, tests break because they've tested implementation details. So you get the twin benefits of easier refactoring, plus you get the benefit that you're writing far fewer tests to get the same amount of coverage, which reduces the cost of TDD, which I think means that people who are abandoning TDD because they think it's slowing down development and costing too much, um, will basically can see more benefit from their test driven development practice. Yeah, ATDD, this notion of acceptance test driven development, um, is the idea that test driven development is too, can become too programmer focused and that it doesn't really help us with the more granular criteria of what a customer actually wants. I think you know, we, we had a lot of growth of the tools around that, like Fitness and Specflow and other Gherkin syntax tools over time. And the reason they were growing was because we'd not focused our unit tests on behaviors, but on the implementation details, you needed something at a higher level to now test and confirm those behaviors. They're problematic because they're expensive to write because they're written quite often in some kind of text or table format and the customers don't really engage with them and developers don't really like authoring them. So really what we need to do is move away, I think, from those ATD tools back to writing behavior into our unit tests, which solves the kind of problems we were talking about earlier. And in addition, what the ATD thing has given of real value, though, is this notion that we want to basically con to def drive the definition of tests in cooperation and discussion with the customer, the QA team, and the developers. It's that process part we want to keep, but the output of that should just be writing behavior-based unit tests. So I'd always really recommend looking at the kind of ports and adapters architectural style. It's got a really good model for separating your domain via ports from the adapters. The adapters being technology concerns, um, such as web frameworks or databases, and the uh, heart of your software being the domain model. And the port gives you a clean separation. It says that if I go out to technology concerns, I go through a port, which I can abstract. And if I come in I'm, and drive my software, on, I'm doing that via the API, so it's clear what the API boundary is. Your tests then become another driver of that API. So your tests work at the same level as, say, your REST framework does or your AMQP framework when it calls into your code base. Um, and so therefore, your tests drive the creation of the API, which is exactly where they should be placed.